Hello, John. Hello, Oliver. Yeah, today we're going to talk about the coronavirus. It's something that's gripped the whole world and it's gripped uh, the Irish people very much as well. Um, I think the only good thing that co came from the coronavirus was we don't hear anything more about climate change. That's right. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, funny how the concerns that uh, preceded this um, uh, corona outbreak uh, was was uh, all to do with the climate and and all that kind of stuff and uh, a lot of other um, nonsense and uh, now we have this uh, coronavirus and it's suddenly the, the 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 people that want this uh, business of no borders the uh, the 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 like of uh, Soros and all these uh, world order individuals. Uh, so they're very quiet now at the moment, including Bono. Apparently, he's in that camp, and uh, it just shows you that, that, that there's, um, uh, when it comes to something like this that's uh, so contagious, uh, that uh, suddenly uh, the, the whole um, ball game changes, and suddenly everybody is worried, and, and places are closed, and airlines won't have passengers, and hotels have cancellations as they have here in Rosslare Strand, where I happen to be uh, staying at the moment and in, in, in enjoying the, the nice weather that we're just having today for a change. The sun is shining. So, um, funny enough, uh, I had lunch with my sister there just uh, earlier today and her friend, and uh, uh, funny enough, there was no talk about anything about this virus, and though we're all of a senior variety and it, we're at risk but uh, it didn't seem to occupy us too much but go ahead uh, uh, Oliver yeah so the virus has been compared to the Spanish flu, flu of 1918 that killed 20,000 Irish people uh, uh, right about, about the Spanish flu it did kill a lot but just be, before you say anything about that uh, that was a misnomer to call it the Spanish flu it was Spain that was neutral and when they had this uh, outbreak caused by the uh, influx of um, people that had the virus, uh, sorry, that had this flu uh, business uh, because it had been started in the trenches in the First World War with the, with the, with the terrible conditions that were in. And it spread rapidly uh, in, 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 um, in the US and Europe and Asia and all over the place. And uh, really, Spain was the only one that reported it because uh, they didn't have this. Um, uh, clamp down and that kind of news because the Allies did. They didn't want to let the Germans know, but the Germans suffered from it as well. So, so they suppressed the news that time, but they can't do it this time uh, because of the advent of the internet and the uh, widespread media sort of uh, approach. So they can't hide anything now. It seems pretty pretty drastic, John, to, to close down the whole country and, and the shops, the pubs, and everything. Uh, to be, to well, it is, it, is, it is very drastic. And uh, it, as a matter of fact, uh, it just uh, occurs to me that uh, you can take steps to sort of um, be, be prudent and uh, don't take unnecessary risks because they say older folk and they classify them as anyone over 60, but some of are a bit more than that. And... Uh, uh, so uh, if you're 60, uh, certainly you might be quarantined. No matter what age you are, but particularly when, you're, when you've are when you served your time in the workplace, uh, you want to get out and about. You don't want to be suddenly trapped in your house according to the advice that uh, these so-called, uh, they call themselves experts, but uh, experts, uh, doctors differ and patients die. Experts don't always have the thing right. And uh, I, I'm just slightly worried uh, that uh, uh, that they're making a mountain out of a mountain. Now, take precautions, of course, uh, but really it's not a, a nerve gas attack, if you know what I mean. In other words, it's a virus uh, that's contagious. Uh, so if you wash your hands and uh, be prudent uh, and uh, that kind of thing, so I think that, that that's the way to go about it. Uh, maybe travelling on planes where where people were probably checked. I know they checked for case you're a terrorist, but now they might want to check to see uh, have you got um, are you are you healthy? Have you got a uh, uh, have you got you, maybe hope, hopefully you haven't got the virus? Uh, because apparently somebody flew on the plane in the U.S. and they had gone for a test, and when they were on the plane, they got a text to say uh, that they were positive, and uh, that person shouldn't have travelled. 
So this is the sort of thing that um, those ones that maybe have some kind of cause or whatever to get that worries them, well, then if they get tested, uh, and then they maybe just have a cold, well, then they need worry. But then if they have this thing, uh, then they can take steps then, I suppose, for it to be dealt with. They have to be isolated. I was talking to a man there, um, and he said that one good idea would be to isolate just the vulnerable people in society and but also have special shopping hours for them and have special supports in place for example for the elderly people that people the shopping will be they get priority say from tesco's for deliveries or that local people in the community would deliver to elderly people so they wouldn't have to leave their homes if they if they were too scared to right um, well that, 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 that would be it would make sense uh if, if, if they're worried and presumably with the media sort of hysteria it's my way of thinking well then people can be worried now john malone uh christian jobs action party is not worried to be honest with you um um because uh you take steps and um uh but uh if it's uh that's uh, not a bad suggestion uh that uh older folk might have a specific time shall we say between uh, 12 and 1 or something like that an hour uh, that if they need to go to shops then that there wouldn't be other customers there yeah. uh, only the older folk uh, over 60 and um, I wonder will you have to produce a birth certificate to make sure <laughs> <laughs> because it used to be a joke one time and uh, there was three hours there, but the worst hours there was a 21 year old he had misspent his youth he looks older than the other, so um, in any event, that would be a person, a suggestion. But I hope that this thing will pass over shortly, and and uh, that then that uh, that it won't be such a, a scare because life couldn't continue like this with everything closed because it would have a, a terrible effect on the on the economic situation. Absolutely. It seems like, I mean, everything is shutting down except the supermarkets, and the supermarket markets would therefore be a bottleneck for the virus. So surely the government should introduce special um, facilities for checkout people, in other words, masks and gloves and etc. or their employer should. Yeah, well, I think gloves now would be a, a, a help because, uh, uh, matter of fact, I wear gloves now when, and uh, when I labor because the weather can be a bit chilly. Uh, and uh, I wear gloves, and then it's handy open the door with a glove because... Uh, uh, so that, that's a, a good idea, to have gloves. Um, and uh, now there's no holy water uh, in the, when you go into the church. Uh, they're not open for Mass, but they're open then subsequently. And uh, there's no holy water now, so you can't bless yourself. Well, you can bless yourself, but uh, normally you dip it in the holy water. Uh, so uh, no mass is now, this is like, um, has been compared, funny enough, to the shepherds heading for the hills and leaving the sheep unprotected. Um, mass is so important uh, if there is um, that kind of thing. And uh, the fact that it's cancelled uh, is not so good. I think the shepherds uh, shouldn't be running off and leaving the sheep unprotected. I think it probably wouldn't be a uh, much of a risk allowing people to go to mass because when you consider it, most people who go to mass nowadays are over the age of sixty-five anyway. That's why right. pretend to say they're at risk. Uh, this is what the local priest said, and uh, the bishops have issued this advice, so they're obliged to obey it. But I know in some dioceses and some um, places, uh, in Poland, for example, the. Uh, the, the mass is being celebrated there because uh, in a time of crisis, that's where you get your uh, spiritual help and uplift and all the rest of it. And I went to go to, uh, I got some items there yesterday in the in the Franciscan Friary in, in Wexford, and um, I wanted to get them blessed, and uh, I normally go to confession there when I'm down here. And, um, yeah, we go to snow confessions. So, like, that's a very serious, uh, because, uh, except it was an emergency or something, in other words, you were, you were on the way out or something. Uh, but, um, that's not good, like, you know, I think, um, I got the things blessed anyway by a priest, and, um, but uh, I'm not in favour of churches being closed like that and not having mass. Mm. I think, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that's where down the years, when there was uh, all sorts of diseases, it was 
nuns and priests came to the fore to treat the people that had these plagues that they affected. They were the ones that um, that 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 looked after the, the sick and dying and gave them the last words. And the same way, there's a famous uh, documentary that I saw there recently on EWTN, and it was about Father Willie Doyle. I think we spoke about him before, uh, but how brave he was in the in the First World War, putting his life at risk uh, to, to rescue uh, soldiers and, and try to save mass in such conditions. And uh, he lost his life in 1917, helping his fellow man. And he was a man that had uh, had had a nervous breakdown when there was a fire in the seminary. And so, like, he had he turned out to be so brave. So uh, it's a very strange thing that... Um, uh, that and he had, as I say, celebrated mass in such conditions, and so I mean they were horrendous conditions. So I think um, it behoves anyway. My view is uh, John Malone's view is that mass should always be be available for for uh, for Catholics, and not this business of uh, going by the dictates of whatever it is that they're saying. I mean we can take pre- precautions when we're in, but. Uh, I think it's all done at the moment, and schools and all are closed, and even Christians, I believe, and all the rest of it, because pretty children can have it uh, and not be aware to have it. So, you know, that's very strange, isn't it? I mean, if you have a cold, it can affect children, doesn't, doesn't it? And uh, I get this bloody thing, because this thing doesn't seem to affect children that would have it and pass it on to, a, to an older person. And this is what they say. So it's all very suspect in some ways, to my way of thinking. Go ahead. The, um, if, if we go back to the Spanish flu of 1918, one, one federal state in America, San Francisco, um, yeah. fared, fared very, very well compared to the rest of the world. I mean, they, they really handled, handled it very well. They contained it very they well. Did. And the reason they did they that did. was because they shut down the schools, the churches, the supermarkets. They shut down absolutely everything. And I, as far as I know, I'm not sure about San Francisco, but in some states, if you didn't wear a mask going down the street, you were shot dead. That's what I read. Well, there, but you see, then they, they, they took it serious. But uh, I think um, if that was in the, the, the uh, that was in the, the Spanish flu or what's called, which is a misnomer, of course, as I said, uh, it's, it's called that. But really, it didn't start there. It started in, in, in trenches. Um, but you see, this is how they don't take responsibility. Now, San Francisco, whoever's in charge there, must have uh, realized uh, the extent of the problem. So they took the precautions, and maybe other cities did as well, but they certainly did, and uh, so they were spared. Uh, so precautions could be taken, but the fact that the authorities at the time didn't admit that, that this problem existed, because they did, they were fighting this war. Uh, this unwinnable war. So uh, that, that that was the problem there. So it's an, an unnatural problem that occurred in 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 in, in during that time. We we've, we've had about almost twenty years now of viruses. We had SARS in two thousand and three. We had pig flu, swine flu in two thousand and nine. We had MERS in two thousand and twelve. And then we had another was scare. That a flu? Yeah. And then we had another scare in two thousand and sixteen when the coronavirus was found in bats. Um, surely, yeah. g- 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 surely, given given the amount of scares we've had over twenty years, the Irish government should have planned for this. After all, Artishuk is a GP, and he should have known better. Well, you see, um, uh, that, that, that that's the, the the thing, I suppose. Uh, like the the, the 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 those other ones that you've just mentioned, I think they were able to be dealt with or something, or else the wording is bad. But uh, this business of bats uh, appears to be something. Uh, of a fetish in China. Uh, now, it doesn't bode well for what their habits are uh, wh- when when this sort of thing is involved in food. And uh, obviously, if you indulge in that type of thing, uh, you're, you're liable to catch something, aren't you? Because you just... Uh, that, that, that's, that's a kind of a crazy way uh, to be living in, 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 in uh in China to to be doing what they're doing with bats. Yeah, but the, and, the, the um, point the, the point I'm making, John, is okay that the Irish government and all governments around the world had plenty warning that a pandemic could strike, and that we've had three serious scares, and yet our governments didn't make any 
um, preparations for in the event of a pandemic. For example, people are now going online to buy their gloves, their mask and their hand sanitizer. The least, the least the government could do is they spent millions on equality, millions on abortion referendums. They didn't spend any money on masks and any decent government would surely send out a set of masks to each household when something like this has, happens. But yet, nothing has been sent to anybody. Well, the fellow says that they could have done a bit more, than what, they could do more than what they've done, considering, as your wiki said, they spent billions on, 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 on referendums, actually three referendums, because they abolished them. And, uh, but I think uh, you can't um, just put it in the context that I come from, a Catholic point of view, you can't insult God and do what they did, not just in this country but throughout the world, but especially in this country with referendums, that they misinformed the people about the consequences of what they were proposing. And abortion is about the worst um, evil that you could inflict in society, uh, not counting the same-sex marriage, which is another evil, quite frankly. And it doesn't matter what they say about these things. And uh, uh, so... Um, uh, uh, God can't be just uh, the, the, people can't do things like that, governments can't do it and fix it on people, and people voting for it in this country, so we really uh, I don't know of any other country that actually voted for it, uh, any other one that had a referendum voted against these things, uh, it was courts and governments uh, imposed these, and I think uh, the stalemate that we have in Ireland at the moment in the political sphere is a, a, a direct outcome of this because there was no debate in the Dáil except a few valiant independent uh, TDs that were all re-elected and were pro-life. Uh, but these ones that voted and uh, kept quiet instead of opposing these uh, things, these opposition parties being the fallen in, they now we have a, a stalemate in the political situation and we have a government that was trounced, well, uh, it wasn't trounced fully, but they had, they had 35 seats and they're still in charge, the ones that imposed these things. So um, uh, this is payback time, I think. And uh, so um, what the government here could do uh, is, is, is doubtful because um, um, a lot of other governments didn't do anything either. And uh, we to have some uh, have to have some plan in action uh, that would involve uh, and not so much disruption now that the cotton. Okay. Um, I think the government could have trialled working from home on a national sc scale to prepare for events like this, for pandemics. Well, well, well that, that would be a sensible thing because uh, the internet now is, is, is widely used for uh, people can work from home. As a matter of fact, I think I remember years ago, some lady that was a, a receptionist for a doctor in the USA was able to live in this country and do the job from here. Now, how that was possible, I don't really know, uh, but I remember that. And uh, so people do work from home, especially in the, in this internet age. They can do just as well from home as sitting in an office. Uh, so um, that's something that uh, that should be should be should have been implemented on a trial basis. Uh, but don't forget uh, that we're trying to have deregulation. In other words, not to have all the, the headquarters in Dublin to try and disperse it uh, in a kind of a federal way. In other words have something in Connacht, have something in Munster, have something in Ulster and Leinster and that. Not this uh, centralisation, uh, central situation, because I think people want to have a bit of power can react, react better than this national so-called government. And don't forget, we have uh, we have this, this crowd uh, running the country still that was, that was toughed out. Uh, but because uh, of the fragmented state of the parties, uh, the same uh, going to find it very difficult to form a government. So uh, this is a very strange thing, and I think it's payback time, quite frankly. I, I think it would be a good idea as well, John. I think the, the reason that the government didn't actually probably put on a trial for broadband working from home on a national scale is because, of course, the broadband is unequal in rural Ireland. I mean, the, the, it's not... That's correct. You know, so I yeah, think I, I think what this does... They're going, to, they're, going to, they're going to install it at vast expense when... I think you and others and people in the 
in the business of the internet uh, uh, can say that it can be done at damn so cheap and more effective than what they proposed. Well, what they could that's actually there, there, there's opportunities here with the coronavirus, okay, for the for the broadband. And I tell you, what they could do is um, they could now contact each school in Ireland and see which school had problems w with remote working with the children for broadband, and they could improve those schools. And we could cut maybe the school day down by one day, um, to reduce congestion, especially in Dublin, because the city is just gridlock every day. It is. Uh, no, it's not gridlock because <laughs> my travel and uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, so it, it does make sense, all right. Uh, I suppose it's this business of this con control freakery, if people are working from home, they feel that they won't be doing a full eight hours or whatever it is. Uh, but if they're able to do the job that they're required to do uh, in shorter time than that, what's wrong with that? Uh, so um, I think they want to be a bit more trusting and use what the technology now provides. Well, you see, the thing about it is, for most people, they would save an hour and a half each way. The, cr the gridlock is so bad now, right, that you would save three hours a day yeah. by not going by, by not going on the bus or the train, by staying at home. Correct. And uh, what's then? You're just uh, sitting in traffic and uh, giving yourself a chart in your life, maybe, but getting kind of annoyed at a, at a, a no move. There's nothing worse than being stuck in a car and it go nowhere and you have to pay tax and insurance and living knows what and maybe a bucket of money for, for the privilege of sitting and you go nowhere uh, because of the traffic and uh, the gridlock. Uh, so, um, so that that would be that this might be a blessing in disguise that uh, that happened now to examine the business of people being that's able to because young people now are used to the internet and they can do all sorts, and so they could easily uh, um, work from home. I would think in a lot of cases, obviously some places they can't, like for example in supermarkets, <laughs> supermarkets you get to buy goods and that in the same way, and when you go to have a bite to eat. Well, you know, food has to be presented to you. You can't just... Uh, so there would be some services that would be um, need people. But anything that can be done uh, from home uh, to do the work that, that you do, having to go into an office, uh, that would make sense. It would indeed. And I'm just wondering, John, 10% of our jobs are in tourism. I mean, that's, that's yeah. a lot of employment in the country that's, that's now in trouble. Oh, of course, and a lot of constellations, even here in Mass Lair, um, there was constellations in, in the, the two ho lovely hotels and really a great asset, uh, but they've had constellations. And um, <clears throat> so, um, uh, and aside from the fact that the 10% of bookers are in the hotel, don't forget the people that supply these hotels. Uh, there's a lot of food manufacturers supplying these hotels. They're going to be affected. So it'll be a knock-on, a certain the ten percent walking into hotel business. There'll be a lot of uh, um, distributors and people to supply the, the the food and so on and so forth to these places. We'll have to let staff go or put them on on, on short time or whatever it is uh, because they won't be needed. Which which brings me back to my point at the beginning, which is that. Should we should the government put, not be putting all the resources into isolating the the most vulnerable in society and supplying every service they could possibly need, but carry on with society uh, in the normal way? Well, I think so. If, 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 if what they say is true, uh, but the fact that they've closed schools and given us what means that they don't know. In my way of thinking, and they're just saying the elderly because elderly can get all sorts of things. Uh, aside from the corona and uh, because of the age and all the rest of it and um, some people suffer from Alzheimer's so they wouldn't know that they, what they, the week it is never mind anything else you never mind what about dementia so they'd be in hospital so what way are they going to be fixed are they going to be isolated so you know um, and uh, oftentimes some people get this business even younger than all you know they can get it, uh, some people have got this um, Alzheimer's uh, in, in the 40s and 50s. And some people have got, got heart attacks in their 20s and 30s. That's right. And keeled over. So, um, you know, life is, is a gift in some ways, and uh, uh, we appreciate it as best we can. Uh, but I think that um, the powers that be uh, are not sure about this virus. Uh, 
and they just COVID. It seems that, you know, there have been, as you mentioned, other viruses, and there wasn't all this, but now this seems to be affecting every sector. And uh, the tourism business, uh, the plane's not bringing in tourists, and Rome is like a, a deserted country. I mean, it depends on tourists, because uh, uh, the place will be packed for Easter, and the same with the Holy Land. And here now, nobody is flying, so there'll be airline, airlines going bust, and airlines haven't to just uh, let staff go, uh, they can't be paying them when they're off, because they, they wouldn't have the money for all that. Well, hopefully things will you know, improve. So, life is, uh, life, uh, the economic world is all dependent on factors going around. Planes bring in visitors and all the rest of ships as well. I don't know whether ships are going there or not. Um, and then, then you have fishing boats going out bringing in fish. Are they fishing now? And that kind of thing. Uh, so, you see, if you start knocking the economic... Uh, scheme or the kilter you're going to get it back to run smooth again no you're talking I think we I think it's, we're in for the long haul I think yes and I think uh, it behoves uh, people that have uh, <coughs> inflicted such evil on society by way of abortion and uh, euthanasia in some countries and assisted suicide which can which can occur now in some of these countries that have it for people that feel uh, depressed and all the rest of us and express a desire for this so we live in very strange times and um, we, from the way this thing is going it looks to me as if it's some way kind of a payback to him it might be worse coming uh, maybe not this uh, but um, uh, you know there's such a thing um, and uh, the, cl the climate can go uh, not, nothing to do with the climate nonsense it's just that uh, we, we we're, were told it's got not man. Man is making a bad fist of it. And uh, the sooner that they start to get off of whatever high horse that they're on and inflicted, inflicting such uh, evils on society, uh, the better. I think uh, it's payback time in my book. And uh, uh, behold the bishops to open the Catholic churches and have mass. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Oliver. Thank you very much.